Hello students, welcome to AIMS India Online Classes. This is science session. Here we are discussing about is matter pure chapter. In the earlier sessions we have seen what are, uh, how matter is classified, what are pure substances, impure substances and different kinds of mixtures, types of mixtures we have seen and how to separate these mixtures also we have seen in the earlier sessions. Now we are going to see a practice sheet that is a Olympiad practice sheet related to this chapter. Okay, let us start this practice sheet. First, let us go through the level one questions. See the first one. What kind of solution is milk? Yes, what kind of solution is milk? Milk is a suspension. A liquid and a solid are found together in a single phase. What is this known as? So, if a mixture, if it is containing solid and liquid, both exist in a single phase, then that is called a solution. That mixture is called solution. Next one. Which of the following is a homogeneous solution? Say, so which is a homogeneous solution here? Muddy water, bread, concrete. A solution of sugar in water. Yes, if you observe this, when sugar dissolved into water, it completely dissolves and forms a homogeneous solution. Now, a solution of sugar in water is a homogeneous solution. Okay, next one. What kind of colloidal solution is an emulsion? Emulsion is a colloidal solution in which <coughs> liquid dispersed in liquid emulsion yes yes liquid dispersed in liquid yes exactly next in which of the following does scattering of light takes place so generally certain kinds of solutions which contain small particles of solid in it like colloidal solutions they can show tin uh, this a scattering of light that we call tyndall effect this tyndall effect is shown in colloidal solutions next which of the following forms a colloidal solution in water so it should contain small particles of solid which are completely not dissolved into water and into that liquid and hence it forms a colloidal solution out of these all this starch will form a colloidal solution when dissolved into water okay next one which of the following is not a physical change tearing of paper bending of iron rod pairing freezing of water into ice cooling of milk so the change in which there is no change in the composition of chemical substance is called physical change if you observe these three, in these three process, there will be no change in the chemical composition. Just the state will be changed. But if you observe calling of milk, in this, chemical composition will be changed. Milk converts into curd and it is a reverse, irreversible change too. We cannot get back milk from this curd. Isn't it? Such kind of change is called chemical change. So it is a, not a physical change. Next, in which of the following is Tyndall effect is observed? Yes, in which it will be generally precipitate solutions which contain small solid substances which are not dissolved in the liquid still, which are uh, emerged. They are called pres <coughs> colloidal solutions which contain precipitate in them. They can show Tyndall effect. How is Brownian motion caused? What is Brownian motion when molecules collide between each other? Then this uh, Brownian motion is observed. So through the collision of molecules between the collide particles, this uh, Brownian motion is caused. Next, to which of the following category does ice cream belongs? Ice cream will come under an emulsion. Ice cream is an emulsion. 
Next, what can be observed when sunlight is passed through a colloidal solution? A colloidal solution contains small particles of solid which are emerged in the liquid. So when light is passed through this colloidal solution, these solid particles will scatter the light. That is called Tyndall effect. So Tyndall effect is uh, absorbed when sunlight is passed on to colloidal solutions. Tyndall effect. What is a sol? A sol is a uh, general form of a solution formed when solid dissolves in liquid and forms a homogeneous mixture. That is called solution or generally sol. A solid dispersed in liquid. So a solution for a sol a solution is formed when a solid is dispersed in liquid. Okay, next one. In both dialysis and osmosis, which particles do not pass through the semi-permeable membrane? Semi-permeable membrane which contains very small holes through it that can allow a pure liquid and the small solid particles be remain on the, on the first side itself. Those particles are called colloidal particles. So colloidal particles cannot pass through the semi-permeable membrane. Only liquids like water will pass. Next, what is the name of the process for the separation of colloidal particles? Actually, it is particles. Colloidal particles from those of crystalloids called. That process is called dialysis. Separation of colloidal particles is called dialysis. Next, shaving cream produces foam. What kind of colloid is shaving cream? Shaving cream is gas dispersed in liquid colloid. Okay, shaving cream is formed because of the dispersion of gas in liquid. It is called gas dispersed in liquid colloid. Next, what kind of solution is drinking soda? Drinking soda contains gas dissolved in liquid. So you can say gas in liquid, isn't it? Generally, carbon dioxide gas is being dissolved in water. Gas in liquid it is. Okay. Next, what kind of solution is amalgam? Amalgams are the homogeneous solutions of one or more metals with mercury. So generally metals are solids. So solids in mercury we can say. The mixture of metals with mercury are called amalgams. So in that mixture one component is mercury. The other components might be any other metal. We know metals are solids other than mercury. You know we can say solid in mercury. Amalgam is a mixture of solid in mercury. Which of the following is a true solution? True solution means in which the components are present in the same phase. Both the components are in the same phase. Sodium chloride in sulfur dioxide. It forms a, a heterogeneous mixture. Copper in silver. Yes. <coughs> in the ornaments made by silver, they mix some quantity of copper with them to make it harder. But both will appear in the same phase and a homogeneous mixture will be formed. So hence, it is coming under true solution. And if you see the remaining salt and petrol, they form heterogeneous mixture. Mud in water is also heterogeneous. So you can say only copper in silver in the form of alloys, it forms a true solution. See the next one. Which of the following is a chemical change? Boiling of eggs, evaporation of water, precipitation of so snow, melting of wax, the change which cannot be reversed and the change in which there is formation of a new substance is called chemical change. If you observe among these all, in these three processes, there is no formation of any new substance, only change of state is occurring. So these all will come under physical changes, only this boiling of egg is a chemical change. This is an irreversible process. From the boiled egg, we cannot get back the raw egg, isn't it? So completely chemical composition is going to be changed after boiling. So it is a 
chemical change. What are the materials which contain at least two pure substances and show the properties of their constraints called? So the substance, the material which contains two or more pure substances and it is showing its their properties separately. Then it is called a mixture. It is a mixture. If the components of individual components, the, con the characteristics or properties of the constraints are shown clearly, then it is called a mixture. Next one. Which of the following is a solid in liquid, solid in solid collide? So which contains both solids? Solid in solid collide. It is colored glass, generally milky glass or some colored glass, they contain solid chemicals in the glass. So both will come solid solid collides. Next. What is a solution of iodine in carbon tetrachloride called? Carbon tetrachloride is a one of the solvents which is in the chemical laboratory just like the water, but it is not water. So when iodine dissolves into the carbon tetrachloride, it forms a solution which we can call as non-aqueous solution because aqua or aqueous means um, water. Aqueous solution means the solution in which water is a solvent. But in this, carbon tetrachloride is a solvent. Water is not the solvent. Now we can say it is a solution without water. That is simply called non-aqueous solution. Means the solution without water. Okay. Next. Which of the following is a characteristic of both mixtures and compounds? So what they have in common property? They contain components of fixed proportion. Compounds contain fixed proportion, but mixtures they do not. Their properties are the same as those of their components. This is true for mixtures, but not for compounds because new compounds are formed. Their properties might be different from the original components. See the next one, their weight is equal to the sum of the weights of their components it is only true according to law of mass action or law of conservation of mass. The total mass of the reactants will be equal to total mass of the products or the total mass of the components will be equal to total mass of the mixture. This is true for both mixtures and compounds. Okay, next one. What happens when salt dissolved in water? is heated when salt dissolves into water it forms salt solution if the salt solution is heated what happens then slowly water evaporates okay they're asking here about a boiling point so when water uh, containing salt when any solid substance is dissolved into any water then the boiling point of that liquid will be changed it increases generally water boils at 100 degrees celsius temperature but when it is added with the salt its boiling point will be increased slightly than 100 degrees celsius so we can say there is an increase in the boiling point of water okay next one which of the following is not a compound see some substances are mentioned here which is not a compound among these sugar, common salt, diamond and plaster of Paris. So these are all compounds. But if you see compound this diamond, diamond is made up of only carbon atoms. Now you can say diamond is a is an element. It is not a compound it is just an element it contains only one kind of atoms in it that is carbon atoms so it is an element not a compound next which of the following is an example of a mixture which of the following is a mixture sugar is a compound carbon dioxide is also a compound nitrogen dioxide is also a compound if you see here brass, we know brass is an alloy of uh, copper and zinc. Two metals are mixed. So we can say it is a mixture. Remaining three are 
compounds. Next, which of the following obey the law of constant proportions in their formation? So generally, compounds they follow law of constant proportions. A compound is formed with the fixed ratio of the combination of elements in it. So a compounds a compound will follow the law of constant proportions while it is being formed, but not mixtures. Okay, compounds will, will follow. For example, if you take water, always uh, hydrogen and oxygen they combine in one is to eight ratio in the formation of water. So they follow law of constant proportions. That ratio is fixed always for the compounds. Next, by which process the drugs from the blood are separated? So from a blood sample. Drugs are separated by the process called chromatography. The components or the mixtures in which the components are existing in the very rare quantity or very small quantity can be separated by the technique called chromatography. Okay, next one. How can sugar from sugar solution be separated? How can we separate sugar from sugar solution? By distillation, evaporation, sublimation, and filtration. So here, sugar can be obtained by the sugar solution by the process called evaporation. Of course, we may get distillation also. By the distillation process, sugar and water both will be collected. But here, it is needed only sugar. So, simple process out of these two is evaporation. By evaporation, we can get back sugar. That is the preferable one here. Next, which of the following processes of separating substances involves both evaporation and condensation? See, which of these processes involves both of these, evaporation and condensation? We know it is distillation. In distillation, first, a liquid evaporates at a fixed temperature. It converts into gaseous form. And those vapors will be collected into another container by cooling it and converts into liquid state that we call as condensation. In this way, evaporation and condensation both occur in distillation process. Okay, next one. Which of the following process is useful to collect pure water from a solution of sugar and water or salt and water? So what to be collected? Pure water is needed. Suppose if you take sugar and water solution, if you want sugar, we can do separate simply by evaporation process. Isn't it? If you are, if you get a sugar solution or salt solution, if you want to get the solid component only, then you can follow that process called evaporation. But here they asked the liquid component to be separated. Pure water they need. To collect pure water from the solution of salt and water or sugar water, we need to follow distillation process. In distillation what happens? That mixture of sugar and water or salt and water will be heated at a fixed temperature. At the temperature, water starts evaporating and converts into gaseous form. These vapors of water are collected and cooled back to convert into liquid form that we call as condensation. This whole process is called distillation and hence the water collected is called distilled water which is purest water. Okay, contains no salts in it. Next, which of the following processes can be useful in separating the salt from a mixture of sand and salt? See, a mixture of sand and salt is given. How can we separate salt from this? Can we separate by dissolution, filtration, evaporation and all of these? What is needed? Actually to say these three processes are needed for the separation of sand and salt. First what do they do? They take the mixture of sand and salt. They dissolve that mixture into water. When water is added, salt will be dissolved into it. Whereas sand remains undissolved. Then what do they follow? Then immediately they filter that mixture then sand will be separated now from the salt solution salt can be separated by 
evaporation technique. So for the separation of sand and salt, we need to follow these three processes. Now it will be correct answer. Next, what is the process involved in making candy? So from the sugar solution, they prepare this candy by the process called crystallization. Okay. Next, by which method can ammonium chloride be separated from sand? We know ammonium chloride specialty. It is one of the sublimable solids. Means on heating, this directly converts from gaseous to solid state to gaseous state without coming into liquid state. So the mixture of sand and ammonium chloride can be separated by the process called sublimation. Okay. Next. By which process can we separate camphor from ammonium chloride? Oh, here if you see, both the components are solids and both the components are sublimable solids. Then we cannot follow sublimation process, isn't it? If you follow sublimation, what happens? Both the components will sublime. So we cannot separate them. That's why we have to use here different technique. That is dissolution. So when you take this uh, mixture of camphor and ammonium chloride with a uh, proper solvent then one of the components will be dissolved other will be separated by filtration and then after dissolution with the evaporation process the component which is dissolved in that can be separated now we can say dissolution and evaporation technique is used so to separate camphor and ammonium chloride next one see the question which of the following apparatus is used to separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids? Immiscible liquids means the liquids which are not mixing each other, like oil and water. So the mixture of these two immiscible liquids can be separated by using a funnel called separating funnel. Okay, it is a special instrument used for separation of two immiscible liquids. Next one. Identify a pure substance from the following. Say which is pure substance among these all? Steel is a mixture of two or more solids. Amal magnolium, it is one of the uh, alloy of manganese, manganese and aluminium. So it is a mixture. Gunpowder is a mixture of sulfur and carbon component, charcoal, these all. So it is also a mixture. Ammonia. Yes, ammonia is a compound, it is not a mixture, whose formula is uh, NH3. So it is a compound, it, which is coming under a pure substance. So ammonia is a pure substance among these three, among these four. Remaining three are mixtures. Next, what is the technique used to separate dirt particles from the cloth in a washing machine? So in a washing machine, dot particles are removed from the cloth by the process called centrifugation means cloths are uh, revolved at very high speed that we call whirling by whirling the dot particles will be removed and move away from the cloths the process is called centrifugation what kind of change is undergone when an electric bulb glows so when an electric bulb glows it undergoes only a physical change because there is no change in the chemical composition and even it can be reversed immediately. Isn't it? <coughs> so it is a physical change. Next question. Both cooking oil and water are liquids at room temperature. Yes, both are liquids. By which of the given characteristics are they different chemically? So, which character is being different for these two liquids, oil and water? Same color and flammability. Order and inflammability. Solubility and similar taste. Order and flammability. Order and flammability. Means uh, both will be, might be having the same color, but uh, they will be having different order. Cooking oils will be having some smell, organic smells. But whereas water, pure water is having no smell. And cooking oil 
uh, is uh, flammable it can catch fire it is uh, combustible whereas water is a non combustible liquid okay this is the difference between those two next what type of mixture is a steel what is a steel it is a mixture of iron with some other metals like nickel chromium or uh, <coughs> even some amount of carbon too isn't it so we can say it is a mixture of solid in solid and it forms a homogeneous mixture so we can say steel is a solid solid homogeneous mixture here it is here okay next one two substances p and q when brought together forms a substance r with the evolution of heat the properties of r are different from the properties of both p and q what is the substance r so a resultant component if it is having entirely different properties from the original components which are mixed then that substance formed is called a compound where it is r will be a compound if it is being a mixture the properties of r will be mixed of the properties of both p and q but they mentioned here the properties of b r are completely being different and one more hint also is given r is formed by the evolution of heat generally this happens in the chemical reactions only so here we can say p and q are chemically combined and formed r so r will be now a compound next which of the following pairs of colloidal solutions have dispersed phase as liquid and dispersing medium as gas so dispersed phase should be liquid dispersed medium should be gas this is in the case of fog and mist these contain liquid particles uh, in the dispersed medium gas okay next one level 2 questions we are going to see now here see the first one cooking of food and the digestion of food what kind of changes are these two what kind of process are these two in both chemical change occurs these two are changes in which chemical composition of the substances change and we can say one more point here these two are completely irreversible changes <coughs> isn't it so we can say these two are chemical processes next one the constituents of a heterogeneous mixture are x y and z okay a heterogeneous mixture is taken with the components uh, x y and z in this mixture if a mixture of x and y is taken then x can be separated by using magnetic separation from y so here one hint is given if x and y are taken x can be separated by magnetic separation so x will be a magnetic substance generally magnetic substances are solids so x should be a solid now we can derive this hint clue okay next if y and z mixture is taken it can be separated by using distillation so x and y is distillated so from this you can say x and y is a mixture of solid and liquid so one should be liquid here either y or z now we can say two solids are there one liquid so x must be solid it is given here in these two both uh, x is mentioned as solid and uh, among y between y and z one should be solid other should be liquid so here it is mentioned so this will be correct answer got it next one in a water sugar solution so in this uh, solid liquid solutions generally the liquid component will be or the water will be solvent and the sugar is a solute so water is solvent sugar is solute where it is mentioned here it is a correct answer next which of the following mixtures will be most difficult to separate see the first one iron fillings and sand we can separate easily by using a magnet sand and water by we can separate sand and water easily by filtration isn't it if you see sawdust and stones sawdust 
and stones can be separated simply by sieving. By using a sieve, we can separate sawdust from the stones. If you take alcohol and water, if you observe alcohol and water, both are miscible liquids. So they cannot separate, they cannot be separated by separating funnel or any filtration or simple technique. There you have to use compulsory fractional distillation technique, which is a little difficult. So among these all, the separation of alcohol from water is a little difficult because here we have to use a fractional, distill fractional distillation technique, which is needed compulsory a specially designed equipment. Okay. <clears throat> Next, mercury and bromine are both. What are these both? If you observe, mercury is a liquid metal. What about bromine? Bromine is a liquid non-metal. Now, both of these are liquids at room temperature. Mercury is the only liquid metal, whereas bromine is the only non liquid non-metal at room temperature. Now, you can say both are liquids at room temperature. Okay, next. Benzene and water can be separated by. So here, benzene is one of the organic substances and in the liquid phase, which is not soluble into water. So benzene and water mixture is, you know, immiscible liquid-liquid mixture. The mixture of two immiscible liquids can be separated by using a uh, instrument called separating funnel. Okay, by using separating funnel, we can separate benzene and water. Next one. If you observe the diagram here, the above figure can be used to separate. What is the process called there? See, it is called filtration. They have taken a mixture of uh, solid and liquids uh, mixture and they pour this through a funnel which is containing filter paper. Now, pure liquid coming down, that is called filtrate that solid substance will remain in the filter paper which is called residue. This process is called filtration. This process for which we can utilize among the mixtures given. See the first mixture, sand from water. Can we separate sand from water by using filtration? Yes, we can. When we uh, pour this sand water mixture through this filter paper, sand will be remained in the filter paper. Pure water will come down as filtrate. We can separate sand from water even stones from water also can be separated by using this filtration even gravels also so these all are the mixtures which we can separate by using this filtration technique next one the particles of a solution <coughs> generally sol or solution contains uh, uh, two or more or a solid dissolved in the liquid generally there the size of the particles will be nearly smaller than the one nanometer okay the diameter or size of the particles will be lower than one nanometer next one read the question here read the passage carefully try to answer the question the constraints of a heterogeneous mixture are x y z in this mixture if the mixture of x and y is taken x can be separated by using magnetic separation oh we have done already one type of one question like this isn't it if x and y is taken x can be separated by using magnetic technique magnetic separation technique now what we can say x is a magnetic substance so out of the given in the given options uh, magnetic substance is given as iron so x must be iron then only we can separate this by using magnetic separation technique and next you see if y and z mixture is taken it can be separated by using distillation process generally we know distillation process we use to separate a solid dissolved in liquid isn't it now x y should be the mixture of a soluble solid in liquid now see in which it is given x must be solid iron magnetic substance so here it is so suppose if you consider this as x, x is iron. So this can be separated by magnetic separation. And if you see y and z as salt and water, these two can be separated by using distillation process. See, is it possible in any other? No, 
this is the only correct answer okay thank you for watching our video please subscribe our youtube channel aims today and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates so you can watch our uh, you can visit our website aimstoday.in for online classes quizzes live worksheets do it yourself activities english classes and even for coding classes also please visit our website aimstoday.in